when the people of God reached a point of being full of the Holy Spirit, amazing things happened. In Acts chapter 4, the followers of Christ were praying and they were asking God for boldness and that he would reveal himself through signs and wonders, as it reads. So here they uh, were praying to God and they said, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. And so the believers here, they had already been given the Holy Spirit previously. But in this moment, as they were seeking God, they became filled with the Spirit. And then as it reads, they received boldness. And this is something that we see as we study the book of Acts, that when one is filled with the Holy Spirit, there is this boldness out of this world that comes upon you. And so again, there is a difference in just having the Holy Spirit versus being filled with the Spirit. And we see another good example of that in Ephesians. And so in the book of Ephesians, we see a good example of how even though one can already have the Holy Spirit, they should still seek to be filled with the Spirit. When Paul was writing to the Ephesian church, he wanted them to experience being filled with the Spirit. We see that he wasn't really saying that they should receive the Spirit because they already had the Spirit, but he was writing to them saying that he wanted them basically to reach a higher level of the Spirit. And this is suggested in the text in chapter 1, as it is apparent that they had the Holy Spirit already. Look at what Ephesians 1.13 reads. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. And so here we see that the Ephesian church were already believers. And when they received the message of truth, the gospel, they were marked with the Holy Spirit. And in chapter four, we see more evidence that they already had the Holy Spirit. Look at what it says in verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And so here again, we see that Paul confirms that, you know, this church he's writing to, that they already have the Holy Spirit. And here he is saying to them that they need to care for the Holy Spirit within them. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He's saying to them that they need to realize that the Holy Spirit has emotions and can be hurt. And Paul is writing to these believers, advising them to stop doing things that hurt the Holy Spirit, but instead to do that which pleases the Holy Spirit. And so this is really a message that God used Paul to write to us all, because it's time. It's time to please the Holy Spirit within us.